Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is uh, called Summer Dusk. It's a 12 by 12, and I painted this one last week. Um, it features a, I wouldn't say, yeah, kind of a limited palette, but more like, more like a, it's u utilizing a limited area of the color wheel, and we'll talk about that some more in a minute here. Um, this uh, painting is also in the members area. Now there's a link for the members area uh, just below the video. If you click on more, you'll see it, that link pop up. And uh, this would be a good one because it's about two hours long, and so I noticed the ones in the members area that, that, that tend to do the best are the ones that aren't, you know, four to seven hours. <laughs> I think I have one in there that's eight hours or something like that. But, um, you know, you can just pause it and uh, uh, keep it open in a tab. That's what I'd recommend. Uh, there's three things that distinguish the, uh, the videos in the members area from this video, and that is... Um, I share the reference image at the beginning of the video and talk about my strategy for how I'm going to approach it. Um, about a third of the way in, I share a color mixing session where I break down the, the scene into the seven constituent colors that I think, seven or more, could be up to 14 colors, it all depends on how many colors are in the reference. and. Uh, Usually the reference has been tweaked or prepared in Photoshop, and by usually I mean always. Um, and the other distinct feature is that it's in real time. So, And lately I've been endeavoring to do quite a lot of teaching um, as I'm painting. I mean, the, the real focus is obviously to do the painting, but um, I'm getting more teachy all the time, and uh, we've seen the members area growing because of it. So I want to share all that with you. Now this painting is done on um, hardboard. Like I said, it's a 12 by 12, and I have a lot of 12 by 12 frames around, so it's been a while since I've done a square, but I keep thinking, you know, I got some groovy frames, might be good to do. Um, hardboard prepared with two coats of transparent gesso, because it doesn't look like there's anything on there, so I like to get that in there. We're always getting new people coming around, so that's one mystery solved. The color I'm doing the underpinning with right now is Burnt Umber and I've really been into that lately. I've really, I was doing my underpaintings with black for a long time um, but these days I'm way more into doing the uh, underpainting with Burnt Umber and then just coming with black over the top. Now in this particular instance um, the uh, the, the the painting was done over two days, so I did the drawing portion you're looking at now for one day. And the next day, a lot of times I might just take it off the easel and put it uh, in my drying area until, you know, I get the urge to do the color. But in this particular case, it was bone dry. It's summer here, so I was like, wow, this is so dry. I even gave it a little scrape and did some color mixing, and it was in, it was out, and went quite quickly. Um, and it went pretty quickly because I had a limited uh, sort of approach to the color and the shapes in the landscape themselves are quite simple. Now I have painted this scene before um, as a horizontal and uh, I'm quite fond of that painting um, and I'm pretty fond of this one too. It's all, it's different, you know. I did flip it. That's a good tip for you. We want to get tips uh, for people before we progress too far on down the lane. and. Um, if there's a scene you like painting and you think, uh, oh, I maybe uh, would like to do this again, but I'm worried I maybe sold it to somebody, or although I wouldn't worry about that, frankly, because it's going to look different. Um, you can just flip it. If a, if a composition is good in a landscape painting, it will always withstand being flipped. If it is not good when you flip it, you know that you need to learn more about composition. <laughs> How's that? And I don't always necessarily flip a, a scene if I'm going to repaint it. Um, I'll change formats though, like, um, you know, I might do is 8x10 vertical, or in this case it's a, a, a square. Um, the, uh, the one I'm actually looking at, the other version I did here in my um, home office, and it looks to be a 7x10, hmm? which was, you know, about two years ago I painted it, and uh, I was really into 7x10 at that, at that time. Lately I've been getting a lot more into 8x10, funny enough, so things go back uh, and forth and roundabouts, and that's another thing, you know, um, 
always keep uh, your re your prepared reference images handy someplace and uh, you know I'm not saying uh, you know the best thing to do is always be obviously taking new reference photographs preparing new reference images um, but if you've been painting for you know I've been going for like uh, 11 12 years now um, it's often really fun to come across a bit of reference you prepared you know eight years ago and have another crack at painting it and it's a it can be a real boost if it comes out better I, if it doesn't then I would say you should have been painting more over that um, length of time and that's the the real key of course to getting good is to to do a lot of painting and, and hopefully as you have some time over this holiday season that's exactly what you're doing maybe uh, Santa brought you some art supplies and uh, you might even be here looking for some inspiration what I'd recommend you do is get inspired um, and then uh, turn off the video and then go do a painting you know um, I like hardboard I like to keep a bunch of it around all prepped and ready to go a lot of times that'll determine um, what scene I'm gonna paint that day I have a lot of reference also prepared and sometimes I have folders of raw images like uh, pictorialist photos or other images that I could just prepare in a hurry if I only have a certain size board available or I just feel like working a certain way um, this last week I did a couple of sepia paintings um, just because I love it and it, it's fun you know I don't think the sepia paintings do as well on the channel but the one I'm going after uh, that I started yesterday um, I had a plan uh, to uh, convert it to a golden sunset like this so that could be pretty fun and educational yeah um, you really can't you could uh, convert a, a real red painting into a night scene but that's going to take a bit of extra doing it's possible though with oil paint almost anything is possible given enough time yeah so let's talk about the color wheel you wanna we've uh, got just a, it's just a little shorter video today because um, uh, I did some things with the editing or whatever, but um, I found a very interesting color wheel online based on uh, pigments. It's got cad yellow, cad yellow primrose, magnetese, blue, ultramarine blue, transparent viral orange, and quinacridone magenta, and made a really nice um, color wheel. So, and it's one thing, you know, that's actually kind of helpful because the color wheel that's based on pure light is mm, sort of resembles the color wheel based on pigment but the color wheel based on pigment is going to be way more limited and uh, uh, this one caught my eye because it had a uh, kind of a fuller range of values so in the painting we're looking at today um, we're going off into yellows which would be in the lightest tones and those yellows don't veer very far into the greens they're sort of a little reddish um, I used quite a lot of raw umber in them um, and quite a lot of yellow ochre and a little bit of cad and some white yeah um, in the trees I could have gone just with reds but I actually wanted to get into some reddish greens now that's not reflected very accurately on this color wheel because a color wheel to get into greens you got to reach around all the way through the purples and blues to get to the greens but there is a place where green and red meet and they have a party you know they have a few beers together and um, that to me is one of the big secrets to tonalism to all the great landscape painters is the way they throw the reds into the greens so there's another tip for you at uh, Oh, nine minute mark, right? You know, if you didn't know, I mean, say you're mixing a green. One of my favorite ways to start with a green is like acrylide yellow with ivory black will give you a really lovely green. And a lot of painters don't teach that, but I've been I've been imparting that information for ages. Um, but right into that, uh, usually before I even lay any of it down, I start checking all kinds of. Um, burnt sienna in that or burn umber into that or alizarin crimson into that or even cad red into it um, and then in, in the light parts of the trees the lighter greens I love to throw um, orange you know all kinds of yellow orange and oranges 
Um, and, and once in a while I might throw some yellow in there too. It depends on the type of green effect in the landscape I'm trying to pull off. If, if you're going for more of a fall effect, you'll definitely want to go with the oranges um, instead of yellows. But if you're going for a spring type of effect, the yellows. And that, that's one of the reasons I sort of avoid the yellows in my green highlight uh, leaves, you know. Um, I mean, I will put some yellow in there, but I don't just go slamming in tons of yellow because it will give you, tend to give you those more electric greens that remind of the spring. And um, <clears throat> if you're going to do a lot of spring paintings, you, you, you probably want to look a bit more at impressionism than tonalism. Tonalism is really more of autumn, winter, um, summer kind of thing. Uh, that spring... Um, I don't know. I did my first ever plein air painting in the spring, and boy, I still have it somewhere. You know, that is some poison greens, let me tell you. Anyway, we're getting kind of close to the end. This is kind of a bonus video, and uh, I may actually put the live video up for, um, you know, for a few days. I did that last Christmas, and that was pretty cool. So um, if I do that, um, and you remember, um, just know I do that sometimes and then I'll make it up to you. I'll get you some bonus material. And then speaking of the membership, you know, I set up the reference image for this in Photoshop. There's quite a few videos with me sharing aspects of that process as well, which is a hidden part of my process that uh, it's, it's totally hidden to you uh, that are watching the 15 minute videos. Anyway, um, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really happy with this video. It looks like it's kind of the, the camera was on for a bit at the end there but that's all good I'm really enjoying looking at this image and hopefully you are too uh, I think it came out quite nice and um, uh, like I say tip on over to the members area tip on over to my, web, my website this will be for sale um, there'll be a link directly under the video and we're gonna do uh, 225 on this one so uh, I would do 250 250 on this one because it's kind of larger for me anyway until i come back with another video take good care stay out of trouble and uh god bless you have a happy new year and thanks so much for your um, your support uh, this year and uh, let's have a great new year take good care stay out of trouble